Hello there. Imagine all the museums and churches in the world burn down and all the priceless artworks in them will be lost to the flames. But you, you can rush in and save 100 paintings. Which ones are you going to choose? A hundred paintings might seem like a whole lot, but really it's a tricky question. Because what are you going to select for? Eh? Beauty? Historical significance? Personal attachment? And remember, everything you do not save will be lost forever. I've studied art in depth for 10 years now, and I've put together my own list, which I'm going to share with you. Every week, I'll be posting a video about a painting that I would run into a burning building for because I think it's worth rescuing for future generations. I find that if you think about art in this way, would you put your life at risk for this painting? I find that most people start to think about art in a much more level-headed way. Suddenly this Picasso or that Pollock which seemed so financially interesting and desirable at first, suddenly you see them for what they really are. I wouldn't risk my life for The Scream by Edvard Munch, which is just famous for being famous. Also, there's nothing as underwhelming in life as going to the Louvre in Paris for the first time and seeing the Mona Lisa. Sure, there's a certain je ne sais quoi about her, but She's not going to be on my list either. Indeed, there are many famous paintings that I can do easily without. I'm uh, going to rub some of you the wrong way, because I'm not going to be nice and represent every culture and every country equally. I am, however, going to prioritize certain lesser known paintings, not to be contrarian, although I am a contrarian, but simply because I think they're important artworks which you need to see and understand. Now you may very well ask, what's the point of this exercise in artistic discrimination? I'll tell you, every day we are overwhelmed by thousands of images. We are simply addicted to them. We consume them on Instagram and TikTok. We see them on Netflix and Amazon Prime. We are distracted by them as we drive past them on the highway. But ask yourself this, how many of them are essential? How many of them have a good effect on your character and your morale? The bitter truth is that even in museums we are bombarded with artworks that are second rate at best. Sometimes they are third and fourth rate. Quite often the artist doesn't even pretend to try. They call this conceptual art and, well, you know it, it can be anything from a urinal turned upside down to an unmade bed or even, wait for it, an empty room. How very edifying. We've been enslaved by this corrupt ideology which claims that anything can be art if we just wish it so. No, this is a modern fiction. Talking about fiction, we encounter the same problem in literary education, where they are seeking to drastically revise or diversify the canon, the books that we consider classics. I had the good fortune to enjoy a proper comprehensive education. At school, we were introduced to the Iliad and the Odyssey. We had to translate Caesar's Bello Gallico, Cicero's oration against Catiline, and Seneca's letters to his friend Lucidius. Letters which I still read today because they are universal and timeless. We also had to read medieval epics like the Nibelungenlied and La Chanson de Roland. These are cultural reference points which tell us something very profound about our identity, about who we are and who we can be. They've guided me and protected me in keeping true to my own self. Similarly, there are paintings which I've meditated upon, whose essence I've absorbed, and as a result, there is an unbroken link between me and my ancestors. I will warn you, this is going to be a dangerous journey. I'm going to put you, confused, rootless, 
cosmopolitan individual back in touch with your roots and your heritage. I'll introduce you to paintings which can and will moralize you and inspire you to do great things. We are going to return to history, you and I, and revive the cultural and artistic knowledge of our civilization. We are going to do this together. I invite everyone to comment on these videos and to discuss their content critically. My first video, which I'll post later this week, is going to feature the work of a German artist who was active in the early 16th century. Care to guess who it might be?